happy period to you. Shush, guys, and I'm gonna say hello to everybody else. My name is Sophie, I am the blue banana, and I have with me the yellow banana Liam, and another yellow banana Manu, who looks like he just peeled himself and has mm. rolled into our podcast today. Explain. <sighs> Good of you to show up. It's really hot Five here. seconds after you I woke took... up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like that, I admit that. No, actually, no, I've been awake for a while. Um, it's really hot here. I did a workout, then I took a shower, didn't bother to blow dry my hair, put on a hat. And this well, at least result. you showered, because sometimes that doesn't happen. That's yeah, true. That's true. That's and true. we can smell you all the way from Australia. Well, it mm. is that time of the month, after all, so... Oh, is it your time of the month? What time of the month is that? My special shower day. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Just one day, one day a month. You, you shower You belong on the Luffy. straw hat yeah, shit. Every, it's, yeah. it's, it's the third Wednesday of of every month. <laughs> That's how it goes. Okay. I'll remember that for next remember time. Remember that for when we eventually visit <laughs> yeah, Japan. Yeah, whenever. Make sure it's specifically on the third Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, or at least just the day after. Yeah, definitely not the day before though. No, that should not. That, that would be God a mistake. No. Oh, no. I, even I, even I'm like, oh, it's God about no. time. <laughs> okay, well, I think that sums up how we're all doing. Um, I didn't actually ask you how you're doing, Liam, but to be honest, I don't really care. Yeah, no, no, that man, how man is doing sums up my life. I'm, I guess I'm yeah. doing better in comparison. Harrison. More hygienic, I suppose. I shower more often. If that is the low standard you want to set for yourself. I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, I'll take that too. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about Happy today is the only thing that's on my mind. Day to not to me. You. Not to me. Happy birthday. birthday to not to you. Not Happy birthday. Day, dear Sophie. Not Sophie. <laughs> Not Sophie. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Oh, is that a thing we do? Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Do we start is drinking Is that not now? a thing, Manu? No, the th drinking actually comes after a second song. So in Australia, there are actually two bloody songs that you have two? to sing. Two? God, one is already so much. <laughs> right? I've never really known how the second one goes fully, to be honest. Because <laughs> you're already so drunk, drunk one at that, that just point. mumbles along at parties. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I agree with you. I don't know how it goes either. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, there's, a, like there's another Larrikin song that we sing just so that we can start drinking. I know it ends with drink, 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 drink. And that's the only part yeah, that I actually remember. That's, how, that's literally the last part yeah. you remember of the night. <laughs> yeah. Drink, drink. Oh. Yeah, and then I just black and then out. Break. <laughs> Sophie, would you like to explain why we just regaled you with that? I actually want to know why you guys regaled me with that because it is not my birthday, but I can only assume the reason why is because it is very close to my birthday and it'll be my birthday this weekend. By the time this comes out, that'll be like three weeks ago. Talk about birthday today, so I thought we're just gonna pretend it was your birthday already. I thought that was the theme. <laughs> no? No? Okay. No, I was just gonna talk about birthdays in general. I just wanted to ask you guys some questions. I wanted to do a trivia of how much you guys know about me and go full narcissist mm. and just decide oh, I'm gonna have a Whoa. Sophie special. Hell yeah, let's go. Holy crap, this is gonna be a test. All I right, my kimchi. really? Let's go. Okay, well then you've got 10 points already. Well, I don't know, it depends how deep these questions are going. <laughs> deep, and very, how much very I've, deep. how much I've been listening to you. Actually, it was really sweet. I'm not sure, do you guys know Emily, Emily Chu, the YouTuber, the animation YouTuber? Know of the name. So she went she went back so. to Korea to visit her parents and jokingly on Twitter I tell told her to bring me back some kimchi and she actually did, which was actually really nice of her. <laughs> That's cool. So shout out to Emily. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I know that Sophie is Korean. How many points is that? I'd say five. There's actually a shocking number of people who Do we have a leaderboard? just assume that I'm Japanese. Really? Especially on my Joy Girl channel. Yeah, I, I think I because I'm because I'm reviewing a Japanese manga and because I'm Asian, they just automatically assume that I'm Japanese. It's like, no, I'm actually Korean. You guys can keep point because it's my episode and my birthday. I'm not gonna, Liam is on it. I'm going to just delegate tasks. I've just given myself five points. I have 10. Yeah, Manu has 10 for bringing me kimchi. He brought you kimchi? It's not even chi, actually it's kimchi. Kimchi. That's not a fact about you. Okay. I'm not getting minus points for that. <laughs> I, was <laughs> like, I was like, it's not chi, it's chi. Can you say the two again? It's not kimchi, it's kimji. Kimchi. It's not like chi as when you would say cheese. It's more like a chi. chi. Like when a DC. DC. Yeah. 
like a qi. DJ. Yeah, qi. Kimchi. Yeah, kimchi. 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 It's yeah. It's not really a K either. Sort of like kimchi. a cross between a K and a G. Kimchi. But kimchi. that's enough facts about. Kimchi. That's enough. Kimchi. <laughs> God. Kimchi. <laughs> it's time for some kimchi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's enough. That's enough about you guys butchering my mother tongue. <laughs> Minus five points. That, that will not get you any points. But Despite the fact that I have decided to give our episode a topic centered around birthdays, I'm actually. Actually, not someone who gets very excited about my birthdays, and the only thing in recent years that has gotten me excited about my birthdays again is the fact that it coincides with One Piece Day, which I'm not going to get into <laughs> because I don't want to start another war with Liam. I think we should get into that. But it's close enough. It's damn close enough. I will only make one addition to what we said in a previous episode and say that at least when. Japan is celebrating One Piece Day for the first hour of my birthday. I too will be celebrating my birthday. So yes, to a certain extent, it does coincide with One Piece Day. Congratulations! You get one hour when no one's awake to celebrate your One Piece. Birthday. I think all all of your birthday is fair for One Piece Day, Sophie. I don't. Thank you. I I am Thank going you, to be a stickler How many points for the do rules I get for that? Here. No. I'll give you two because I think you're just sucking up. Why do you give him points at all for sucking up? This is because I'm a narcissist. That's right. I have control of the points. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a question for you guys. Do you think birthdays get more exciting or less exciting as you grow older? Is this part of the quiz? Because I know the answer is it's less exciting. It's definitely less exciting. <laughs> you think it's definitely less exciting? Oh, yeah, way less exciting. Birthdays used to be amazing when you were a child because it was when you'd like get all your schoolmates together and you'd go bowling or see a movie or do some sort of shenaniganry. Mm. These days it's like, yeah. I'll, I'll invite my friends over for, for a nice dinner and maybe some board games. And that's if I want to do that at all. Because all of your friends have lives now and they can't necessarily afford the time to come over. Over, and I also don't necessarily care enough to try and invite them all over and it's just, it's just another day really. How many points do I get? I'm gonna give you five. It was a bit depressing but I'll give you five. <laughs> Pity points. Nice. Five points for the old sad man. I would slightly disagree with it. I also think that birthdays get less exciting over time. Like as a kid, I fucking loved my birthday. Like I had this tradition where I would go, as you said, Liam, bowling. And then like, cause my birthday is when it's very cold outside. And so there was this public bath where you could actually like kind of like a German onsen if you want. <laughs> But basically, you, it was heated outside to like 30 or 35 degrees Celsius. And so like, while it was maybe snowing or really cold outside, you could just swim there in the evening, which was really cool. So it was these two things and then maybe like pizza or something, which was mm. my mm -hmm. fucking highlight of the year. Pizza was always an essential element. At least now that you're older, like I really don't care about my birthday, but it's a nice excuse to meet some people that I some like otherwise rarely have the chance to, like friends that are important to me, but just barely see because they live mm somewhere else or whatever like it's it's always it's not always the same people but there, there's like people you you get to see on your birthday sometimes just because you make an extra effort to invite them or something that maybe you would spend way less time or wouldn't even see at all that year in the first place also for family obviously which is like nice for birthdays because mm. it's like always one of the few occasions where you see like extended family in the year for me at least oh that's nice see birthdays or any sort of celebrations for me growing up felt somewhat extra lonely because <laughs> i only ever had my immediate family family in Australia right. and so I couldn't no celebrate with my extended family and no I've never had any friends mm -hmm. had zero friends but you have two colleagues I came to Australia and then yeah, yeah. Whole and then I was just waiting for someone to accept me and then the closest thing I found was this old sad man and this suck up who I, I don't know <laughs> maybe up. you think I'm your boss or something you look great today <laughs> you look you're shining right. let's not you're go shining far. Sophie you're a bit dull to be honest you could be you're shining. radiating you're radiating right, Minus Not 10 points for both of you. Good vibes. Minus so. 10 points for both of you. Oh, that puts me back to zero. <laughs> But I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself, Liam. Did you throw a big 30th? No. <laughs> no. Minus 10. I mean, I suppose I should have expected that answer, but at the same time, why? When was my 30th? Did you do anything for your 40th? Uh, I've got no plans for it. Do you plan to do anything for next year, your big 50th? <laughs> <laughs> Currently not, no. What did I do for my 30th? I think I did something relatively big for me, which is I invited... It's fucking exactly what I said. I invited a ton of people over to the place I was renting at the time and we played games. We played uh, 
a lot of throw throw burrito, which is a fun game where you get to throw burritos at people. Do you also get it to eat some like of them? It does sound like fun. No, do not eat my burritos. We need them for the game. Just for throwing. Yeah. All right, understood. But Maybe even that, that was playing with a food. huge pain in the ass trying to organize like so many people at this day, this time, like all for my benefit. It just, ah. Uh, felt so guilty and annoyed. I can completely understand that. And I don't actually mean, like, I swear I don't mean this as a dig at you. Um, but, <laughs> but I remember for my 20th birthday, my friends but. came over and I wouldn't say I exactly planned it, but it was just sort of like, yeah, it's my birthday. Feel free to come over. They did. And all we ended up doing that night was play Scrabble and drink some red wine. And I remember thinking, I really am quite old. <laughs> Like this is, I don't think this is like, how someone you, should be. Would really be spending the their twentieth birthday. <laughs> Yeah. I would kind of agree with you, Sophie, like also not to take a dick at Liam. I have a, I have this really weird attitude towards growing older where I'm terrified and... You should be. I'm really terrified of turning 30, but at the same time, I also don't... Like, I think there's an interesting mix between me being scared of getting old and it kind of being like, whatever, it's going to be like, you know, as long as you live the way you want to live, it's going to be fine. But it still, it terrifies me, especially when you have like... One, one shot of optimism, one shot of pessimism. Yeah, yeah it's, kind of, it's, it kind of, it's kind of like that. <laughs> balancing it out. It just mellows. <laughs> <laughs> it's just mism. Yeah, I know many people who are already past 30, like friends of mine, a bunch, and I don't think anything changes. It's really just another. <laughs> you make it sound like they've passed away. I yeah, know many people I know, who it's have like, passed 30. It's like they got a disease or something. <laughs> <laughs> Aging is a disease, right? And I help them go to counseling for it and they and they seem to be doing well. No, I think I think age really boils down to two things. I like for me I feel like it's something yes you have your age like how long you've been on this earth. But really like you all, like what really matters, I think is your mental age and your physical age. You know, how you treat your body and your mind, I would say. Cause I know, you probably also know very young and refreshing thinking 50 year olds, but then people in their twenties who already mm. pretty much behave like they're 70. Case in point. <laughs> I did not do that in my twenties. I was a very young, optimistic, fresh faced dude guy in my twenties. This all started to happen late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, I remember. I remember you told us about your raving days. Yeah. Very unexpected side of you. I used to be incredibly social and sort of counterintuitively extroverted. Like I used to try to talk to people and go out with them and do things. Because you enjoyed it or because you felt you had to? Both. What happened, Liam? Yeah, no, I feel like um, we really are in a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> what happened is I graduated university and because I studied six hours away in Wagga Wagga and I lived there, as soon as I graduated, kind of lost all my friends. So when I moved back to Sydney, got a job, I had to make serious efforts to like actually have friends again. It's harder uh, to, do you think it's harder sense. to make friends when you get older? Yeah. I definitely think it's harder to make friends when you get older. It's easy to make friends when you're young because you just see like some kid in the playground like, oh, is that a Charizard you got there? That's awesome. I also like Pokemon. Where now it's like, if you see someone in a suit in the city, you can't really just rock up to them and go, bro, <laughs> like want to be friends. And I think I talked about this in another episode i can't just look at someone who has a one-piece shirt on yeah, and be like yeah. want to be friends <laughs> i really can't and you probably should but i think probably since everyone obviously everyone's character gets a bit more complicated throughout their life i think everyone yeah. has different backstories and more comp like as you said as a kid it's like i love pokemon and that's one of three things that that describes me as a person <laughs> that's one of three things that defines you as a yeah. child whereas as you grow up the differences in every aspect Aspect yeah. become much more pronounced like political economic social arguably it also harder. gives you more possibilities to actually have a lap over with many people a what because well everyone has overlap. a like a much broader An spectrum overlap? a lap over sounds like a, a special dance that you would order at that's a what i was gonna did say did i say lap over <laughs> 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 I was expecting some sexy time. Yeah, no, it's very easy to make friends at those places. <laughs> for Especially for money. Yeah, no, you just need to drain your bank accounts. Yeah, that's good. And people love you for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think there is more lab over, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's 
there's the potential. It's like the Venn diagram is still there, but it like expands outwards. You have less in common with more people. Yeah, I think that's probably fair, mm. fair to say. But I don't even think it's about what sort of similarities or differences you have. I think it's even like as you get older, I think everyone just assumes that people aren't interested in making friends anymore anyways. Oh, no, they've so got careers I, and families mm, exactly. and dogs. Yeah, everyone has other things to worry about. So even if I say like if I'm doing like a class whatever and I see people, I might talk to them, but it never gets to the point where it develops into a much more deep or meaningful relationship uh, than that. Than just right. saying hi and like making some like small chat, like small talk small when we're chat. together to actually... <laughs> we even yeah. <laughs> just... lap over. <laughs> Small chat. Yeah, some small, small chat, chat during the lap over. God, I hate that. So awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Although, so another thing about that I hate about birthdays is that I think you said it, Liam, that you don't like organizing it because it's just a big deal. You know, something like you have to throw for your own benefit. Yeah. It feels really selfish from my perspective, trying to organize all of those that people far. just for me. Selfish, really? That's a very extreme way to put it. Because, I mean, would you feel that way? about going to someone's birthday like god this person invited me to the fucking birthday i have to take time out of my day to go see them i do especially if they organize it at a very inconvenient time it depends on the person <laughs> which for liam is every venue. day by the way <laughs> okay <laughs> so there are some semi friends of mine who have tried to organize birthdays that take place like way out the fuck in the blue mountains hiring an airbnb th a three hour drive away when i can't drive is actually kind of problematic and annoying and because it's an overnight thing it's like clashing with my work schedule and it's just like oh this is so much more trouble than it's worth just so that i can get intoxicated and go happy birthday that sounds fun to me honestly that sounds like a pretty good birthday <laughs> it does it probably does does sound fun to the youthful. Less fun for me when I've got to try and like organize myself and my life and my family around them. I mean, I would kind of distinguish between. I think there's like you can actually be selfish about a, like about your birthday. As with everything, it's like similar. I f feel like when you have people, when you t share something about yourself or you brag, like the line is very fluent. I would say, but there is a stark difference between you know, you openly sharing something about yourself and that being genuinely interesting and you bragging about that thing. Give me your dream selfless birthday. What are you doing for your birthday in this hypothetical, your selfless birthday? I mean, I would not say like selfless as in, I think- I want the selfless Can't you, like doesn't, doesn't celebrating, like when you invite someone to your party, that's also an expression of, you know, they're, they're important to you. Isn't that like social appreciation also for, for those who are dear to you? Yeah, sure. I mean, just speaking from my personal experience, my grandma would be furious <laughs> if I didn't invite her at least for coffee or something for my birthday because also for like you know it's it's a social event as well where you kind of yes you get presents and stuff and it is kind of about you but at the same time it's also about kind of appreciate you also spend money right and like invite people who are dear to you so it's kind of like a bit of a mutual jerk off okay you you saw <laughs> the friends and question. family um, an example of a selfless birthday I imagine would be in high school I was friends with someone whose name I was about to say but I I will not. And for his birthday, he basically invited us all to karaoke, except in a strange twist for high school birthdays, he paid for everything. And it was like, the way he mm. phrased it was that his birthday was a time to celebrate his friends, his relationships. And that's why he made sure that just everyone was taken care of, which in high school, was a big deal because none of us particularly had any money. That's odd that you say that that's... Not normal. Because I did that in high school, same. not karaoke, but I took my friends out to dinner and I paid for dinner. Yeah, same. Because yeah, really? I thought, you know, I'm taking, like, you know, I'm, well, like, I guess what you're saying, Liam, you know, I'm take I'm asking you guys to take some time out of your day and I would like to spend that time with you. I'd like to share a meal, so I'll pay for dinner. That's definitely not been my experience. Like, I went to a birthday last Oh, if that's year. not your experience, I understand your perspective way better. Yeah, I went to the a birthday last year for a friend of mine's husband mm. and basically to, to make everything happen because we went to like a proper VR gaming place we went bowling we we did an escape room and then we went to karaoke afterwards because that's just how it seems to happen and yeah at the end of it we got sent like okay here is your share of all of the activities and you contribute to it which is fine because I think that for someone's birthday like I would prefer to make sure that they're the ones having a good time and with no financial strain 
in on them. Like, I'm very happy to pay for someone else's birthday. I think my experience is closer to Sophie's. Do you think that's still the case now, Mana? So, like, you still pay for everyone's now? If I was to do something for my birthday, that's why, one, I don't try to organize things for my birthday because I just can't <laughs> be bothered for it. But two, I don't think I would necessarily pay for everything now. It would just sort of be like, everyone just pays for their own. Or, or if it's like, if it's an extended thing, if I'm having dinner and we're going out to karaoke, maybe I'll just pay for the karaoke, but we all pay for dinner, or like, or like vice versa. It adds up very quickly, depending on what you're doing. Like you could end up paying over a thousand dollars for like yeah. 10 people to do birthday things. That sounded like with just your share, you might've been spending almost a thousand dollars if you're doing VR gaming, karaoke, and dinner, I and like, yeah. <laughs> It ended up being like just under $200 or something, which was fine. It was a nice day experience. But if I was doing that for like all of my friends, there were like 15 people there. That's, that's a lot. I mean, to be fair, I was never a big fan of gigantic birthday parties. So I usually like maybe up to like elementary, middle school, I would have maybe like more, more than 10 people at my birthday party. But after that, I think it's always been like closed group of five or six people max. And I usually pay for stuff. And I feel like if it's really something where like it's a bigger event as you said renting something out going to a place i feel like that's a bit different because if it's if it's that is your birthday thing then i do feel like you kind of at least if you have the if you have the financial freedom to invite mm. people and pay for it other than it being like oh hey wouldn't it be cool if someone says wouldn't it be cool if we went somewhere for your birthday but then it's just your birthday is just happening on that trip we're going to <laughs> not this is your birthday trip and then i think it's something different yeah and that's a good point right because i think a lot of people just use some someone's birthday as an excuse for the group let's go like let's get yes. together and let's go somewhere let's have some fun and it's like yeah we're doing it because we have an excuse to do so but like really we'd all just love to you know take a weekend off yeah that's what i Maybe. think and then that's, it's completely again, normal that's to not split how it. my experience was <laughs> <laughs> okay interesting interesting yeah right as was like a friend declared this is what we are doing for my birthday you're invited you gotta pay for yourself <laughs> uh, interesting no yeah not, not not i mean i've i've been to those birthdays too and i then I can kind of more relate to you feeling like it's a bit more selfish mm. in a way. Yeah, I think it's it's fair enough, but it is like, uh, it's, I would equate it to people who have weddings overseas and then put that social pressure on people to, pay. to get plane tickets, pay and accommodation, to, yeah. to fly overseas to the probably an admittedly beautiful venue, but it's like, it's a huge financial and time strain on mm. people who do that. And if you don't show up to their wedding and you're like yeah. close family or friends, then it's a bit like, oh, so you didn't want to come to my wedding, did you? Okay, friendship over, family connection over. We're not related anymore. Yeah, no, I agree. It is a big ask. Well, maybe if they're dick face and don't understand, maybe it's better not to have them in your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not to go. <laughs> <laughs> if they're a dick about it, we clearly have different experiences with it because for me, it was also throughout my life that in general, it tended to be smaller parties or people with bigger parties where people were just loaded or their parents were loaded. I mean, it was <laughs> but, different if one of your friends was absolutely loaded, in which case they mm. would just pay for everything. But, but otherwise, I Not feel like the experience was more experience. either make something, do something cheaper, like a house party with more people where like the presents would kind of be alcohol or whatever. <laughs> and that would kind of just kind of be how it goes. Or you just do it with fewer people, but then you still pay for something nicer, maybe like movies or whatever. So we all just agree that we're not big fans of planning our own birthdays. Have you guys ever been in the position of having to plan something for someone else? Not necessarily like a birthday. I mean, I guess it doesn't really apply to you guys. But for me, for example, I know that if my best friend gets married, I know that I'm going to have to organize a lot of things as her maid of honor because she's already told me that I'll be her maid of honor. <laughs> For my sister, when it was her wedding, I will say that I feel extremely guilty that I was quite young when my sister got married. So I was actually quite useless as a bridesmaid in helping her organize any sort of thing or even just like the hen's night, for example. I wasn't much help. I can picture that little Sophie trying to call the bulky stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir, can you give her a lap over? Can we what lap over? One please. stripper? Just one, please. Master have given Sophie a lap dance. And he be good at making small chat? <laughs> Why well, you give her a lap over? One lap over, please. I have had to plan a couple of things 
over the course of my life for other people. Most recently, um, and this wasn't that recently, it was like a year and a bit ago, I had to plan my mother's 60th birthday, basically. Your mom's young. I suppose so. I guess it depends who you're comparing it to. Me? No. Old people. Um, dead people? Yeah. What if Pretty they young. died people young? young? Okay, the dead old people. Jeez. Oh God. The dead old <laughs> people. Trying to talk about birthdays. This is actually relevant because Sophie did the birthday topic. The reason why we did it is because the place we moved into has quite a nice backyard and my mother was all like, oh, this is very nice and fancy. So it gave us the idea to plan her party there. And it was fairly simple because my mom only wanted to invite like six other people. So we set up a dining area in the backyard. We got a private chef to come over and cook us lots of delicious meats and things. I um, set up a lot of lighting outside. Like I used some of my gear to light up the trees in pink and green, which are her favorite color. And the entire garden was kind of like the poor man's vivid, I guess I would describe it as. <laughs> vivid for you, Manu, and for everyone else is like a light show that we have in Sydney for right. about three Three weeks mm. every year around May, June, we have a light show and light up throughout the all whole of the city. Floor. Yeah, so we do things like light up the opera house and all sorts of fancy stuff. Mm. In any case, that was actually fairly easy. I would say because most of the planning took place in the place where I was, right. instead of having to like organize a location elsewhere. And where I live is fairly convenient for my mother and her friends. So the biggest problem was having someone else come over to cook. Cause I, <laughs> that is a wild <laughs> experience to me, like a private chef. The thing I didn't realize is that the private chef does not bring their own serving materials or cutlery uh, because these kind of chefs are very used to just you know like wandering into mansions and having kitchens full of serving gear so wow. we were having this like really exquisite meat coming out on like my childhood mickey mouse plate because we just <laughs> ran out of stuff to put things on <laughs> but i'm sure your mother loved that like my... like an art plate that you made back in kindergarten oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my mother loved it the chef was really concerned though because again he was he was very used to quite upper class dining and he pulled me aside and went are you sure it's okay to serve on these i am i gonna get fired because of this oh my god that's actually kind of hilarious poor guy he was yeah. like, is it a trap they're just gonna want their money back yeah. they're gonna give me a bad review like yeah are they gonna take photos of this and this is gonna end up yeah. like my boss In is my gonna portfolio. see this and like why did yeah. you serve the food on that mickey mouse plate and not the good stuff it got pretty bad we also had to serve like vegetables in a pot because we just ran out of stuff. We didn't realize we had to provide our own stuff. Holy crap, that must have been a lot of food though for six people to run out of all your cutlery and serving with. POV, I live in a house with two people and at any given yeah, time, okay. we only really have enough to, I would say comfortably serve four people because we just don't have people over for dinner really. Right, so right, we ran okay. out Fair pretty enough. quickly. I feel like that's something that, that should be sort of a disclaimer or part of the agreement I prior agree. to them coming over. But like, by the way, you, you're you going to provide all the cutlery, all the serving yeah. wear. All I come with are my Sanji hands. Again, I think it shows the how just out of my class I was when I organized this. Yeah. <laughs> because the expectation with that kind of chef is just that, you know, you have stuff. You probably have an entire pantry full of serving gear. But then again, on the other hand, I think it's kind of cool. I, I think it's kind of nice if you have like a bit of a mix up to like, you know, you have like kind of a familiar theme with that nice dining and a professional cook. I think it's kind yeah. of fun mixing like it was stuff. great we had a lot of fun and by the end the chef was laughing with us at the end mm. of the night because of how absurd everything That's had cool. gone <laughs> yeah that sounds like a really fun time yeah. my mother really enjoyed it and we probably would have done something similar except you know lockdowns and viruses and damn yeah fair enough not you manu you've never had to organize something for someone not on that level yet luckily i'm generally i feel like i could probably pull it off somewhat ish but like generally i'm very much the person for example when it comes to traveling even like with a lot of things i'm very spontaneous so I'm like, should we do a weekend trip and oh, like, oh i yeah. would hate that what month were you I'm thinking exactly the same. and i'm like this weekend <laughs> like two days even bigger trips i book very spontaneously like literally when you i did. went you to spontaneously yeah, I went back that. to germany yeah. yeah i literally booked my flight five days before i left back to germany doesn't that end up costing you so much more money than like plan 
planning it out beforehand. Yeah, I guess so. Though, honestly, with slides and stuff, <laughs> it doesn't really make that big of a difference, I found. I think you have to book really, I, really far in advance. I disagree. I think every week you wait, prices go up. Really? Maybe yeah. the flights from, from Europe to Japan are different, but the prices barely Maybe. change. Going from Australia to anywhere that isn't New Zealand is a big undertaking. And yeah. I know that I, if I'm trying to plan something, I'm looking three months in advance because otherwise every week I wait, that price is just going up and up and up. Yeah, it gets much more expensive. Even to New Zealand, it gets really expensive sometimes. Yeah, damn hobbits. I mean, I'm not even talking about like big <laughs> trips, but just like small trips. Like, should we head somewhere overnight, whatever, and just do it really spontaneously? So I'm not the type of, I'm not a big planning guy in general. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> maybe, the impression I'm getting, yes. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe my channel reflects that, I'm not sure. <laughs> but <laughs> I would say the biggest long-term project I've undertaken is actually the art project for my channel right now that actually looks like half a year in advance mm. you know that, that's wow. legitimately like i don't think i've any i've done any or maybe you could argue that like learning a foreign language like japanese maybe that but even there it's more like just sticking with it and showing up rather than actually yeah. planning it's more like grinding planning in advance. Yeah. going yeah. oh i'm gonna learn this japanese in two yeah. weeks from now yeah exactly i mean liam will know this also from youtube like even there where i do have a lot more more disciplined than in the rest of my life. Even there, I'm not the person like like Liam who has like a strategy for the next few months. Like my horizon for planning is usually maximum two or three weeks in advance. If I, at all. I will say so. So is mine at the moment. Like about three years ago, I used to plan everything two months in advance. Like I had all of my video topics written down two months in advance. Holy crap! And that was abysmal because it didn't allow me to <laughs> respond abysmal. to what was actually happening happening. And so to break out of that, I because I used to write these scripts at least a month in advance as well. I had to dump about a month's worth of material just go, I've written this, not going to use it, and I'm just going to try and stay more current so now it's like two weeks i think i try to forecast at most but even then with one piece every week big changes happen that like mm. completely influence the direction of everything i want to talk about i mean right now is like one the, the first time maybe this year where i actually have backup content in some way or form and that's maybe one video or two i have in the back burner <laughs> for the longest time i've been doing youtube i've made a video and then i published it <laughs> and then i made the next video <laughs> Yeah, generally well, not a great That's usually how my person. channel goes. <laughs> that's usually how my channel goes as well. I had maybe one video where I actually kept on to it for about a month because I felt like, because of the topic, I felt like every time that I tried to, I thought about releasing it, I thought, oh, this isn't actually a good time because something else happened this chapter or, you know, this clashes with something else. And so I kept waiting and then released it during the month break. Nice. And then it ended up that I released it slightly too late because someone else had actually already uh, released the video on that same topic and I didn't and know this about led to your it. Controversy. And it got led to me, you know, being accused of stealing someone else's content when I was like, this is so unfair. I actually had this ready. I've had the video ready for an entire month and I've just been sitting on it. <laughs> you see, Sophie, this is how we know that you're not a small YouTuber anymore because you've been accused of stealing someone else's right. content publicly. That's the <laughs> level of graduation where we can say that you're a mid-size now. You have yeah. reached, Sophie. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Cuddle time is over. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should be glad. Well, the reason why I actually asked you guys whether you have any experience organizing someone's, you know, birthday or you whatever have someone's birthday coming It's because you want us to organize your birthday? You know what, Liam? If you want to organize I a don't. private chef to <laughs> cook for me on my birthday, whether you want to accept my birthday as One Piece Day or not, I will take you up on your offer, Liam. You can tell me my birthday is whatever day you damn well please if you're going to organize a private chef to cook for me. That's fine. No, you do that. Is. But the reason why I actually asked is because I came across this interesting article. Listen to the listen to the headline. The woman who faked her kidnapping to avoid planning her boyfriend's <laughs> birthday party. Relatable. I empathize strongly with relatable. this. Relatable. <laughs> Very real. You say it as a joke. I say it really. This is relatable. <laughs> Kidnapped. Oops. This is this is the extent to which she faked her own kidnapping. Alvarez's boyfriend reported his girlfriend missing on February 24th when he found blood in his 
home and two missing weapons. But someone called local detectives early the same evening to report that Alvarez had stayed at his home the previous evening and that he dropped her off at a house in Arizona City the next morning. Alvarez initially told detectives she chose to disappear because she was overwhelmed at the thought of planning her boyfriend's birthday party <laughs> and she claimed the blood in the house came from a dental filling that fell out during while planning her escape. <laughs> fell out of stress, huh? I appreciate the use of the word escape. That's some <laughs> real dedication, man. Holy hell. No, it's real anti-dedication. It's... It's the real dedication to anti-dedication. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Shouldn't we just be so glad that we have the spicy flu now where if you want to get out of something, you could just go... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not feeling very well. It is a socially acceptable excuse because you just go, oh, I got the thing. I don't want to give yeah. you the thing. I am the selfless one here. You should yeah. appreciate me. These poor people. It is, it is. That is actually quite it wild. Is, it has given us a once in a lifetime just get out of jail free card for any mm. event. Yeah. Any social event. The kingdom of the introverts. So I'm telling you this in advance, Liam. <laughs> Okay. I know you just recovered from your spicy flu and it hasn't been the four weeks between then and when my birthday will <coughs> be. So if variant. I invite you and you have some sort of lame excuse, I'll know where to find you and my private chef. Okay, you probably won't know where to find the chef, but you do know where I live, so that is terrifying. <laughs> I will say, I have yet to be invited out for anything birthday-wise. That is true. Um, like I said, I'm not someone great at organizing. I also admit that I really thought that I would be spending my birthday this year overseas. You know, the plan was, the initial plan was to spend it in Japan to celebrate One Piece's 25th birthday, but Japan and Japan has actually opened up for tourists, but what I hear is that you have to go on some sort of mandatory tour guide. Like, it's not like you're just allowed to go traveling and you're not allowed to just go on holidays in Japan on your own. You have to be part of some sort of tour package that mm. the government oh my has God. deemed that awful. okay. I hate that idea. Yeah, me too. You just get like stuffed on a bus full of other people, driven around, go and take a picture of the temple yeah it's like somewhere this else. is tokyo what That's are what the odds like that they're well. going to take me to kumamoto to see the one piece statues yeah. <laughs> very low i think well maybe very high because maybe they think like okay you know this is the perfect chance for us to really spread the good news of one piece even internationally you know they're doing a lot of promo to make sure new fans are coming into the one piece fan base recently and so maybe they might think like Yes, this is the international market that we're hitting here. I like your optimism, but it's wrong. <laughs> Why do you think so? Why do you think that way? Because if people are coming to Japan, they're going to want to do all of the, the hot spots. Because what you're saying, it sounds like the equivalent of a Kentucky tour or something. Yeah. Where you just blast through landmarks very quickly, very organizedly. Mm. So, you know, they're going to take you to Shinjuku. They're going to take you to a temple. Maybe you get to go to Mount Fuji as well. Stuff like that. They're not gonna take you to like country kumamoto and go see that gold luffy statue do you do any of you know what a luffy is no i agree that's why i haven't booked my japan trip yet but i am just waiting i am waiting for just any sort of word to drop that Japan is open to us plebeians again, mm. and then I shall jump on it. I'm, I'm excited to host you guys. Will you organize us? Will no, you organize he is not in charge of us? planning anything. I will plan the Japan trip. <laughs> Sophie, we are going to plan the trip, and Manu is oh, going to I'm implement not, it. I'm not a great we planner either. We are going to plan... <laughs> the trip and Manu will implement it. I'm a very <laughs> loose planner. I sort of just have ideas Let's on go things to that I'd like to do. <laughs> okay, okay, what, yeah. new, new, new plan. I go by myself. I plan the trip and implement it. <laughs> nice, good strategy. I can relate to that. <laughs> and this is why Liam's not doesn't like to be an extroverted anymore because he just surrounds himself with crappy friends who won't listen to poor, him. Poor planning friends. Like I don't know how you can do this. I don't know if this is just because I live in such an isolated or then again Sophie also does, that I just live in such an isolated part of the world. But if I am making like a 14 hour plane trip to Japan or even more like a 24 hour plane trip to Europe, I want to make sure I know what the fuck I'm doing when I go off that plane. I need to know 
I'm going here, spending three days there and there and there. You you could leave a couple of like little flex. Days. Yes, exactly. I think that's important. Like having like cornerstones, but not setting every. Like I think it's that sounds terrible to me. Having like a trip where everything is planned out. The point is that I am planning that non-planned time. I don't want to have the whole thing be non-planned time and then just kind of improvise something because I'm I'm not gonna get the most out of that experience that I could. Yeah, you know, I completely agree. I would probably just say though that I will. I'm someone who will be like like maybe one to two things a day. It's not like I'm like, okay, I have to hit up this place first and then, you know, I'm going to spend a couple of hours here and then that night I want to go there. Depends what the thing is, Sophie. Like if you're going to a hot spot of stuff, you know, to be efficient, you like see all of it while it's there so you don't need to go back another day. Needless to say, I will just, I, I like people who plan. I think it's great. I find it very <laughs> beneficial. I just can't be one of them. So I will tag along on your Japan trip, this Liam, is and I will, How I will take the fruits of of your labor. How of the three of us am I the best planner? This is not how it should be. This this says terrible things about you two. Why would you think that Manu and I are better planners? Manu moved his entire life overseas. Manu manages his own Wasn't business. It seems like he on a whim. Really I, I feel like on a whim. It seems I like I, I, this is the image that I have now. Manu was studying in Germany. I was like, I really don't like German. I don't, I don't want to be studying. You know, this is boring. How can I make studying fun? Why not go to Japan? I like anime. Yeah, okay. I'll go to Japan and study there. <laughs> Flip side, Sophie, I thought you would be a better planner because you have like 12 different jobs and you're about to become a lawyer. These things take planning. You don't just go, oh, I'm going to get my legal things today. You know what meme speaks to me at a very like very core level is the one, the dog surrounded by fire. Oh, this is like, fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> That's just, that's, that's my life. Like everything just burning around me. Like, this is fine. <laughs> I feel like that's how most people feel though nowadays, no? I would agree. I would say the flames are probably a bit lower in my room because I try to put them out and keep them manageable, but yeah. But I can still relate to the meme. I think I like planning. I think that's, <laughs> that's just how my life works now. That was a, that was a whole character arc in this podcast. It was. I think I've discovered that I am, at least amongst the three of us, like a planning person. <laughs> Never thought I was. Just took you some perspective, I guess, Liam. When you guys are on holiday, do you prefer relaxing holidays or active holidays? A bit of both. I'm an active person, if you haven't noticed. I would say I am a 70-30 active person. Okay. So I like to have some certain days where I just sort of take it slow and just sort of bask in whatever, wherever I am. But for the most part, I would like to be active, but I definitely like to take certain days slower and just chill out a slower. bit. Slower. Mm. My wife and I are completely the opposite. I am a very active vacationer, whereas Chantel is like, my ideal holiday is just sitting by a pool on some island somewhere. And, sure. and my poor, poor wife always has to accompany me to do all of these crazy things. Like when we were in Edinburgh, I took her on a, a hike mm. up to uh, Arthur's Seat, which is this like really nice place, thing yeah. where you can see the entire city of. Yeah. I don't think I quite understood how long the hike would be <laughs> when I planned this. <laughs> like, it took us a good like four hours to get up and back down again. I really loved it. But the entire time, you know, um, Chantel's just slightly behind me. <laughs> Here we go. I'm supposed to be on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm more, like, slightly also leaning towards the towards your wife Liam, where I How dare you? in the moment in the morning I in the in the morning in the moment <laughs> I do feel more like well I do feel more like relaxing and just doing nothing and taking it easy, but I I never regret actually forcing myself to get up and experience something because I do think the yeah, chill holidays never. are great for recovery, but the action holidays are usually the ones you have like your yeah. most action intense holiday. memories of, right? Yeah, definitely. I am completely the opposite of my everyday life on holiday. I want to be outside. I want to be walking to places. I want to be seeing stuff. Whereas Licking in my day-to-day -day -day life, I want to be inside and I want That's to be not seeing people or things. <laughs> Mm. Tastes like Taste democracy. that democracy. And yeah. dog <laughs> But maybe that says more about because of how you spend your day-to-day -day life. Like I can imagine people who do feel like they're on the run, you know, they're always constantly
constantly busy in their day-to-day -day, you know life and they're constantly out they have to go out to work and they're not working from home their idea of a holiday is just let's just sip on mimosas from 10 a.m until 10 p.m right you know? yes yeah that's it it's just not me I, I would get bored so quickly i agree like if i was to do that i could probably only do that as a weekend trip i wouldn't go yeah like on, i could like, not a do full a full week overseas mm -hmm. exactly like my idea of doing that would be like going up to the gold coast still within australia just doing an interstate trip for like a weekend where i can just hang out at the beach for a weekend instead of going overseas to do something somewhere else yeah i i would agree with that even then 48 hours or well, like a weekend i guess you're including friday as well wow that's a long time to do nothing <laughs> like you would need people with you who could be thoroughly yeah, entertained right right <laughs> but then that's because you're not someone who just enjoys the beach as much no i look at it it's nice it's pretty <laughs> there's some sand it's fun to swim in but like you know 45 minutes later all right what can i do with you nothing your sand and water i think if i'm at a place that offers like for example let's say i did a trip to as you said like scotland it's not exactly like scotland offers a lot of opportunities to just sit back and chill like you would actively have to at stay the in your beach, hotel the scottish beaches yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you would actively have to like chill in the hotel somewhere at the lobby or something but if i'm at a place like let's say i went to sydney i would definitely want to spend some time relaxing at the beach or swim or something or get eaten by a shark no matter like we don't know what you're what you guys do i think the cool thing is like mixing both where you kind Classic of you know things. for example mm, like exactly. i love going to greece where you take a hike to a nice beach that's maybe like you know some somewhere special or something yeah that good, and yeah. then relax mm. there for a bit speaking mm. of beaches i'm going to send you um in our last episode i showed you some fan art from one of my sponsorship managers i did not <laughs> show you this one that was specifically of me and it was done because we were talking about the beach before oh, i've wow. sent it to you on twitter this is <laughs> uh, her interpretation yeah. of me at the beach <laughs> is that ice cubes or is that bubbles coming that is, from your it's balls? a bath full of ice cubes it's uh, I've strategically got sunscreen placed there. It's cubes. spf 100 <laughs> because i need it to not burst into flames like a vampire and of course i just look miserable as i probably yeah. would at the beach <laughs> that looks pretty accurate. this is actually so accurate i remember <laughs> when we did go to the beach and we didn't even go sit on the sand but i remember the next time i talked to you you were like i got burnt i got sunburnt i that did day. because we weren't sitting in shade or anything it was just like sun on my skin and i had no sunscreen because i wasn't prepared to go to the beach and you fucked me sophie you fucked me <laughs> okay uh, and here i was just trying to have a nice time <laughs> nope well, that'll teach you to not plan nice times yeah how you dare know, just, you sophie just a hang Here's out if i was able to plan that i would have taken some sunscreen and i would have like taken precautions and i would have not you know turned into a smarter <laughs> i did feel very bad afterwards because i was like holy crap we we were there maybe for about we were 30 there minutes for a, a long time maybe like you said it was 45 minutes <laughs> uh. we got to this point where you were like here's some sand here's some water <laughs> what do i do with you now <laughs> and then exactly. and then i think we called it a day so i know that there Sir. are different cultural all right thanks Manu. okay <laughs> retake no no retakes it's kind of you cute. know cultural <laughs> customs mm -hmm. how dates wrong with you? and things work <laughs> yeah <laughs> Can I speak, please? I'm the I'm the host. It's my birthday episode as well. I can't even speak on my own damn birthday. You said it's not happy birthday to you. But it's in anticipation of my birthday. Right. Okay. Or of all our birthdays. So I know that there are different cultural things. You know, different cultures exist. They do. What? Believe it or not. Yes, they do. Would I don't you believe, believe it? it. But they do. No. no, 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 they do. No. And even the way, you know, like even when you celebrate big birthdays, are a thing which is i know we've talked about it before about how america you know you're only legal to drink when you're 21 and so a big birthday celebration would be for your 21st which doesn't mm. really exist to celebrate in your australia third year of drinking. yeah right. it's not a big deal in australia so for us an 18th is a big thing but what about you guys in germany manu do you guys have like special birthdays special years where your birthday would be more special than others yeah i would say when you turn 18 18 as well yeah but that's it let's say i don't also question um 21st are pretty damn special in australia i find they are but artificially <laughs> <laughs> yes most birthdays are kind of artificially special it's just a day it's just a number i mean yes of course but you know i can understand why people feel a bit 
you know, a bit more significant about 18th because you do get a whole host of new rights that weren't mm. available to you before. The 21st is a big transition though, because for the most part, that's like, you know, you're just finishing up uni. If you've gone straight out of high school, you're about to have this big transition into real life. Like right. you're a proper adult now. Whereas when you were 18, you were just a child that could <laughs> drink. So you don't count as an adult with 18 in Australia? You do. You are, like, you're legally mentally, an adult. No 18 but, year old oh, I mean, adult. Yeah, but then you're still a, a lot teenager, of 30 year olds aren't mentally adults, I would argue. <laughs> I, I would agree with that as well. <laughs> and a lot of 50 year olds are also not yes, adults. Yes, mm. facts. I know there's like some cultures where like certain birthdays have a lot of meaning, like in the Philippines and I think Mexico also. You have like quinceanera, where it's like when a girl. Yes, turns I've 15, heard of that right? as well. Like I think superficially just hearing about it, because I think it kind of like celebrates, you know, becoming a woman, which just from a, you know, white Central European perspective, seems a bit fucked up but then i do not have any detailed knowledge about this holiday or like this this birthday in particular so i'll abstain from making <laughs> assumptions <laughs> yes, i think that's very wise unusual restraint from manu this week yeah <laughs> unusual restraint but just from the from the you know two things you hear about it it sounds a bit old-fashioned but then again maybe it's not maybe i get the i don't get the point properly so feel free um to educate us in the comments please about the 15th birthday Mm. And tell us more about the Filipino piss spirit as well. I'm very the interested. Oh, yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Also very yes. interested in that one. Yeah. Yeah. See if there's any sort of lap over between the two. <laughs> Culturally yeah, and spiritually. So never bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, I guess a special <laughs> coming of age. No, no, no. This one, this, one, this one doesn't concern urine, but it does still concern bodily fluids. Interesting. What a transition. So a lap over between bodily fluids and important coming of age moments in your life for women are you know your first menstrual cycle right can be a pretty big deal doesn't always have to be right. but i don't know if it's a big thing in korea or if it's just something in my family where my mother thought that it was something important to recognize and somewhat celebrate <laughs> here here good people of the neighborhood <laughs> i don't know if i've told you guys that i've had i have two sisters i've got two sisters and it's a family of just all girls apart from my dad still your disney songs and all of us have gone through the coming of age moment where we got our first period and I remember when I first got mine my mom bought me a cake like similar as if <laughs> like it is my Velvet birthday or... I think your mom's awesome. there was just a <laughs> I will say yeah I, I, I mean I thought so too I thought it was That's really cool. sweet what I didn't find very sweet was that weekend we had some family friends over <laughs> as guests for dinner and they were like and so we had some leftover cake so we oh, were having that no. for dessert and naturally they are this is my daughter's you know, period is, cake. Is this, yeah, is this was someone's birthday? And my dad thought that it was fine to share that information that, oh no, 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 this was just for Sophie's period. And I remember feeling mortified, oh, no. you know, just as like, a, you know, prepubescent, or I suppose at that point, a pubescent little yeah. girl. Like, oh my God. I can imagine that. It would be similar if like, I don't know, That's such my a dad mother moment, got me a cake after my first wet dream or something, and then <laughs> yeah. told all of her friends about it like in front of me <laughs> our liam is now fertile squirtle <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of sweet from your mom though because it's kind yeah. of taking so yeah taking like something that's very intimate and I think like shameful for in the many cultures and making it something mm. nice and like you know not like kind of a, like right from the start associating it with something positive which then your dad ruined like days later <laughs> 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 but I think that's cute I like that it's pretty sweet yeah well as a family we decided that we need to maintain trauma and we need to keep traumatizing the young girls and so when my sister, when my younger sister got her first period, we also ended up having a cake. For a bit of context, the word for birthday in Korean is 생일, 생일. 생일. And then the word for period is 생비. Oh, like, so like it's one, it's Sounds one, like, an like it's just one letter I different. Smell yeah, it's like one character <laughs> different. And so, and the birthday song that you guys sang to me is exactly the same in Korean. It just goes, 생일 축하합니다, 생일 축하합니다. But as a family, what we decided to do for <laughs> my younger sister was we all sang 생일 축하합니다 and sang happy period to you. <laughs> but to be fair, it was a close, just a family affair that I've just now decided <laughs> yeah, to make public. 
sounds very cute. That is kind of cute. Yeah. I like that. Very progressive. I like that. <laughs> what happened for your first period, Liam? Is the reason why your mother decided... I heard that and I'm going to choose to ignore it. Is the reason why your mother got the cake because of the similar sounding... Uh, names and she thought, huh, wouldn't it be funny if we celebrated this like a birthday? Here's a cake. I think she said that when she was growing up, her mum, I don't think she bought her a cake necessarily, but decided to sort of commemorate it as well. And she just wanted to do something nice for us too. And so I think she just decided that, yeah, you know, cake, we all like cake, we can have cake. Make it Money, you're nice. not making it any better, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's so warm with the hat. Just keep the, keep the cap on. <laughs> it's so warm with the hat though. You're I'm such a Fidgeter, just, just stay still. <laughs> it's, it's the standing desk, really. I've got a standing desk and I am relatively still. I'm not just like... <laughs> I feel like I want to move with the standing desk. Just do steps on the spot very discreetly. I mean, this is a yellow screen, so we could like... Discreetly. That is have... not discreet. <laughs> discreetly. <laughs> We can have red to like Photoshop out the yellow and just some <laughs> some trees moving in the background. It's like one of those things when people, you think someone's running and then the movie pans out and they're actually just running on the treadmill. Oh yeah, exactly. Kind of like that. Have you seen those movie shots? Yep. But also back on topic, something different, something strange about Koreans is that when we're born, we all count oh, our... Oh yeah. I, I we're think all, I've heard we're about all that. one year older in Korean age. Mm. That's the simplest way to put it. So and I never really understood Exactly. How, no, no. We don't start at one. You all start at zero, but basically when the new... Oh, no, 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 no. It's yes, you, you would. You would start at one. You you start at... Because it's not necessary. I don't even think you it's really like... should really start at like point. I don't know five. if there's a big... Yeah, exactly. Because that's how it should be. Because, you know, you've only spent nine months in the womb, you know, yeah. on average. So I don't know where it starts, but you basically start at one. And then everyone at the beginning of the year on New Year, we turn another year older. So it's not really related to your so birthday. all Korean birth we all the same in day. all of the America are listening to you, Lisa Sophie. Just... So we're not <laughs> celebrating your birthday on One Piece Day. Nowhere near it. Your birthday is after my birthday. You're not celebrating my Korean birthday on One Piece, oh, on so, one piece oh, Day. Oh, get two birthdays. Nice. So. Yeah. Do, you, do you get well, two birthdays? No, we don't. Except my dad does. My dad <laughs> does get two birthdays. Because I'm the man in the family. Classic patriarchy. <laughs> some of the like elderly or some older generations of Koreans still follow the lunar calendar when it comes to important dates and so in terms of birthdays it's a like it's pretty customary to think of your birthday in terms of the lunar date and so for that reason it gets really freaking confusing trying to figure out when dad's birthday is every year because we have to figure out like what it is compared to I empathize to... with you this is like me with your birthday <laughs> no 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 because mine it stays the same Liam one piece day doesn't change it's yes, it much does. simpler it's much simpler no 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 it's completely different but my dad this year decided that he wanted to celebrate his birthday on just the normal Gregorian color date. And he told us this a couple of months ago. And he actually told us what he wanted for his birthday present in advance. The other day, I was having dinner with him and mum. And we were talking about, I think it, we might have, I think we might have been, even been talking about my birthday or we were talking about my nephew, about some sort of birthday celebration coming up. And my dad stops eating for a second and goes, wasn't my birthday last week? <laughs> And then mom and I both froze, looked at each other in the eye, and then turned around to him on cue and said, but you celebrate your birthday according to the lunar calendar. And you said that you want to celebrate your birthday according to the lunar calendar this year as well. And he just goes, did I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and just continue. So you eating. gaslit your father. Wow. In regards you to got out of that was. one, huh, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> good save, good save. I did feel very guilty, though. <laughs> Primarily because I can't actually even remember what he asked for for his birthday present. <laughs> I didn't remember his birthday or the present. <laughs> Did I get you the thing that you wanted? Yes. To be fair, my nephew was born very recently. And so all my other family members mean very little to me now. We've got a new <laughs> oh, baby wow. in the family and all my attention goes to him. Priorities, yeah. Yeah, it's very exciting. You guys don't have siblings, is that right? I do not. No, okay. So you've never been a nephew or an 
I've been a nephew. I have uncles and aunts. <laughs> <laughs> no, never been an the uncle or around. an aunt. Yeah, yeah. No, this is and... my first time and it fills my heart. I think it's like the perfect experience because you don't need to take care of the baby full time. I mean, God, can you imagine that? But then <laughs> but then you get to spend enough time with him and you get to be the you get to the give cool him all aunt. the love. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I think he's a bit too young to recognize me for how cool I really am but he'll get there so am I <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah sure I could you can recognize me as your cool aunt no I was gonna say I still have yet to recognize you as cool and it's been 32 years <laughs> all right then <laughs> <laughs> that was a surprising awkward silence <laughs> yeah. oh, you could have just tasted it a bit longer tasted it a little bit longer mm, nah, 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 silence okay we could bask in the silence no this is like basking at the beach it makes no sense I get bored very quickly Sophie say something 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 I will say <laughs> is that birthday celebrations like I said haven't ever really been a big deal the only thing that we do do yeah. traditionally is that we eat seaweed soup on our birthdays in Korean in Korea and I think Liam you would hate it. I mean, what's in it? <laughs> just I, as it sounds. I was about to say, like, I wonder what is in it. Hey, if it's just boiling water with seaweed, what's wrong with that? Seaweed's fine. It's boiling water. It's boiling water with seaweed, salt, and maybe Great. pepper, and Great. a meat of choice. Like some sort of, like, not big This is like the meat, Liam like little, soup. Salt little... and meat of choice in soup? But with seaweed. No, no, no. The, the, main, the, the main ingredient is seaweed. So? Seaweed is just, like, salt vegetable. Are you a fan of seaweed? Depending on how it's prepared, sure. Like Korean dried from seaweed. From what I can really gather good. from your palate, yeah, dried seaweed's good, but it's not dried because it's in soup. So it's slimy. It's wet seaweed. Couldn't you just keep it dry in the soup? Why don't you use dry seaweed in the soup, Sophie? I could also just eat and drink I'm sure around you could, it. But if there are optional meats. That's the thing about Korean food is that I think the boom of Korean barbecue and fried chicken is a gross misappropriation <laughs> or not misappropriation misrepresentation it's mm. a it's a misrepresentation of what korean food is like usually so not all korean food is delicious snow cheese fried chicken unless you're going out if you're eating at home as a korean you rarely would have that it's a predominantly soup based and even those soups don't actually have a whole lot of meat in it unless you're having more of a stew and then it's a bit different like i mean contextually korea has been a really poor nation up until you know relatively recently mm. and so they had a lot of soups a lot of our side dishes are like vegetables that you could probably just find in your garden in the mountains and then you just season it and you eat it in a way so it's a bit more manageable because you just need the nutrition and so like for that sense i think it is like supposedly really good for you but it's not like the meat heavy you know fried chicken deliciousness that a lot of people associate with korean food these days i'm just gonna put this out there though your seaweed soup probably falls on the middle scale of things that I would eat because you haven't mentioned tons of spice you haven't mentioned any tomato you haven't mentioned any just like weird shit that goes into it it's just really basic ingredients and the only thing I need to get over is the like a bit of texture and if we know something that it's that Liam is really basic <laughs> real yeah basic I food. am such a basic bitch when it comes to food and these are all very basic ingredients <laughs> all right well I'm going to make seaweed soup for your birthday then Liam and oh, I'm gonna happy birthday we'll see. so happy by the birthday. way tradition yeah. in my family to eat on your birthday is ice cream cake so I'm gonna call that a bit of a step down so <laughs> no offense I could completely agree with that we also have a traditional cake we have a traditional cheesecake that my okay. grandma oh. used to make which is really oh, that's oh, nice yeah. it's that's like a nice. traditional recipe that has been passed down to you eventually yeah 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 oh I've made it oh yeah I know yeah I can oh, make it. oh wow. you know the secret the I secret do know the secret recipe. yeah actually I have a really cute story my grandma used to be a fantastic cook and um, so one 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 day I told her, oh, it would be great if you could write me down some of your recipes for me to, you know, cook as well. <laughs> you know, when I ever live alone or just want to like, I wanted to, to learn how to cook. And so she made it an entire project. Her Like the last years of her life, she made an entire project to create a cookbook, a cooking <laughs> book, which is really cool. That's it's so a nice. thick one. But yeah, with all her favorite recipes. It's really cool. It's really cute and really cool. Is it a lot of traditional German food? Everything, really. Everything. It's, it's tra I would say it's heavily European, at least. I, think that makes mm, sense. Okay. I would say that. Right. But also like a lot of like pasta and everything. Which is like, heavily European. Yeah, yeah, which is 
he's European. Yeah, <laughs> heavily European, I would say. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Um, you have like this just whole tome of amazing recipes. That yeah, it's pretty nice. Of. Yeah. I mean, my cooking skills are medicore, I would say, but my best recipes are definitely all from my grandma. Like if I make something that actually tastes decently, it's probably one, <laughs> one of her recipes. you're basically using the mm. cooking equivalent of a spell book. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Which is, like, <laughs> I mean, better than, I, I do also at occasion do something I personally like to call creative cooking. <laughs> Which I, I don't like this I'm a, big fan. I'm a big fan of creative <laughs> cooking. I, I hate this already. <laughs> <laughs> which is, is, is like not for my grandma, but for my mother, which is basically what is in the fridge and what maybe makes sense yes. putting <laughs> these ingredients together. That is completely... Onion, mean. butter, like pickled herring, <laughs> <Sounds good laughs> tomatoes. So Sounds like, good what so can we make out of this? No, this is why we need to plan so that we don't need to improvise and, and have creative cooking. We need to, at the beginning of the week, go look we need these ingredients for this so that we don't end up shoving like pickles in butter that doesn't sound half bad sounds more than half bad i despise pickles <gasps> oh i like pickles is it the sour <laughs> yeah is it this is okay mm. it's the sourness right okay mm. so you're just not a big fan of anything sour in that case sour is definitely my least favorite food group not, really not okay bitter. i would prefer bitter over sour really I, interesting oh i love sour don't know me too why. i'm a big fan of sour Sauerkraut isn't even sour. I know, but I hate it anyway. I despise Liam doesn't like sauerkraut. it. Love it. The smell is just really bad. German bread, amazing. Sauerkraut, it should not exist. It is Satan. I love sauerkraut. No, sauerkraut tastes amazing, but when you make it, it like <sighs> literally, it smells so bad. I mean, that's the same thing as kimchi. I guess. I, I mean, know. anything fermented, right? If I was actually to honestly describe the smell of kimchi, I would actually say it smells a bit like fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's pretty fair. Kimchi gets pretty sour. We should just stop fermenting food. But it's, it's so good. It's so food. healthy. Mm. Sauerkraut kimchi natto is literally like the shit. most healthy thing you can eat. No, it doesn't taste like shit. That's a matter of opinion. Granted, the opinion is stacked against me. Smells like fart, tastes like shit. <laughs> um. And your opinion sucks. <laughs> it's a matter of opinion, and yours isn't valid. Yep. Give me some good old fashioned gimdi. Fart smelling gimdi. <laughs> but cheese is also fermented. That's true. That is a good point, actually. Cheese is a big yogurt. exception to my rule. Yeah, though. yogurt. Yogurt also is very healthy. not. I do not like yogurt. Painfully healthy, yes. You hate all the healthy foods. I would say that's fair. <laughs> do you like olive oil? <laughs> Like, yes, love That's olive good. oil. That's Especially good. love dipping bread into olive oh. oil. With a oh, bit of yes, salt. so good. You don't get a lot of that in Australia. It's like very standard when I was traveling around Europe to get like a nice bread basket with the oil and the salt. And I was like, ah, it's such a good experience. In Australia, it's just like, you're fucking lucky you're sitting down now. Order your shitty thing from the menu. You know, Frango's, the chicken place that we've been yes, to together, Yes, in they used to Petersham. They used to um, provide bread baskets. Mm. Or, but it really? seems to be like a selective, it seems to be very selective because my friends have all said that they've received a bread basket when they've gone, but I've never received a bread basket. I have never basket. received such service from Frango's. Right? That is ridiculous. Yeah, me neither. Wow. It's a Portuguese chicken place. Fantastic chicken. Love it. But like Better fries. bread? bread basket yeah oh my god and the portions of fries that you get you order like a small fries and they give you like this pillowcase full of chips it's like wow i think what they're really good though is they're really good at their um spicy mayo that sounds really good they I'm give you mayo and guy. like a chili just wish it wasn't that unhealthy but, but 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 I would say that I'm a big mayo girl if it comes to kupai mayo. Of course. Like the would. Japanese mayo. I'm not a big fan of just normal mayo. Fair enough. I prefer aioli to mayo. I actually am not a big fan of aioli. Okay. Oh, I guess what? I love just it. enemies in everything Ooh. culinary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I won't take you up on the offer to hire a private chef for me, Liam. Oh yeah, because if I hire the chef, it's going to be food that I want. Trust me, not food that you want. Can you imagine Liam like hired a professional, very classy chef and he came out with just servings of fried chicken, just just lots and lots oh, of fried that chicken would be just so good. constantly. And it wouldn't just be fried chicken it would be like all kinds of meats it would be like steaks and some lamb oh 
meat. And given your your Luffy like tendencies, I feel oh, like yeah. you would love it. <laughs> my taste in food is very similar to my movie taste. Like I'm very very easy to please and very hard Trash. to dissatisfy. <laughs> but like it takes it takes something special to actually make me you know go wow. But I do love most food in general. Like Granny's recipes. Yeah, I would agree as well. Actually, I would agree with. But that. like I feel like there's nothing like there's certain things I wouldn't order if there's other alternatives, but there's almost nothing I wouldn't actually eat because I can't or something. Mm. Is there anything that you would not eat just flat out now? No. No, because we've established that you would even eat raw chicken. That was a stupid question. <laughs> yeah, that was true. <laughs> Manu really would just <laughs> eat anything. I didn't know it was raw, okay? <laughs> Both times as well, yeah. yeah. Oh, I wish it was only In two such times. quick succession. Times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was only those two times that ever happened to me. <laughs> we already have established that I have a incredibly strong Caucasian stomach. I also have a fantastic I also love traveling to uh, you know more exotic places especially in Asia so uh, you know places like Thailand the Philippines Indonesia without exception every Southeast Asian country I've been to <laughs> I've had food poisoning before <laughs> when I went there so my my favorite one is Bali where there's something called Bali belly Your favorite food poisoning mm -hmm, it's my favorite food poisoning <laughs> it's something called Bali belly such fun memory. which is like the, how the locals call it when you basically get food poisoning they they found a really cute word for it. Oh, just the case of the Bali. Yeah, yeah. And so I think one big rule as a white tourist whose stomach is not used to anything is just eat packaged food or something that is like decently cooked. Of course, what I did, we went along this like really sketchy looking like mud road and there was just a small like, let's call it diner at the side of the road that had something like their special was advertised in vibrant colors. Tuna burger. And Ugh. while all my friends were <laughs> like, dude, we should look for you something else. The pain that's I was out. like, tuna burger? I love tuna. That sounds fantastic. Let's go get that. And I ate it and it tasted pretty good. They also made us take pictures for their Instagram, which I now regret. <laughs> Because like five minutes into that burger, I didn't even feel it. I could already, I could already feel my stomach starting to rumble. So what I did, my, I thought like to try and save it was that I ordered like a big glass of brandy. <laughs> which they had to <laughs> So I was like, maybe I can kill this before it becomes a problem, which didn't happen. I actually died for four days. It seems to be running theme for you. I don't know why you didn't learn your lesson I'm after the never. first time, you but I think- You will never learn. Yeah, I think that's I'm just you. trying to strengthen my stomach. What doesn't kill you makes, makes you stronger, If we were hopefully. in a survival of the fittest situation, <laughs> you would be dead by now. Definitely oh no, no strategy, no planning. <laughs> no. Is Tuna burger? Oh. <laughs> That raw chicken on the side of the road. Give me some. <laughs> I love raw chicken. Yeah, well, on that dumb note, we're not going to celebrate you. We're going to celebrate me. To be honest, I think when this episode comes out, it's going to be Liam's birthday. So happy birthday to you, Liam. Yay. And everyone, thank you for, yes, become member. a member, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Yay.